What's the main purpose of the risk assessment? A. It tells you who is in charge of health and safety on your site. B. It provides in-depth statistics of all recorded accidents. C. It identifies hazards and provides a safe method for carrying out a task. D. It tells you the location of all safety equipment. Correct answer is, C. It identifies hazards and provides a safe method for carrying out a task. Question 2. When should you report a health and safety concern to your supervisor? A. When your personal safety is threatened. B. When the safety of a co-worker is threatened. C. When the safety of a third party is threatened. D. All of the above. Correct answer is, D. All of the above. Question 3. Over time, excess noise can damage your ability to hear. Can such a condition be reversed? A. Yes, but you will be forced to change your current job. B. With time, the condition may repair itself. C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. D. You will need surgery to repair your hearing loss. Correct answer is, C. The damage is permanent and cannot be reversed. Question 4. By wearing hearing protection you will, A. Eliminate all possibilities of being exposed to excess noise levels. B. Reduce the amount of noise you're exposed to. C. Improve your hearing. D. Reverse any previous hearing problems. Correct answer is, B. Reduce the amount of noise you're exposed to. Question 5. Your job requires you to wear ear defenders while on site. However, one of the pads is missing. A. Use a piece of cloth and wrap it around the shell while continuing to work. B. Wear them as they are and continue working. C. Do not wear them. Work without hearing protection. D. Wait until the pad is replaced before entering into a noisy area. Correct answer is, D. Wait until the pad is replaced before entering into a noisy area. Question 6. Give two separate answers as to how excess noise can affect your health. A. Loss of hearing. B. Constant ear infections. C. An excess buildup of wax in your ears. D. Persistent headaches. E. A condition known as vibration white finger. Correct answer is, A. Loss of hearing. D. Persistent headaches. Question 7. You find yourself on the job site next to a co-worker who is using a loud piece of machinery. You are wearing no hearing protection. A. Immediately stop and speak with the supervisor of your co-worker. B. Continue working, as the job site will always be noisy. C. Tell the worker to stop what they are doing. D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. Correct answer is, D. Leave the area until you have secured the correct personal protective equipment, PPE. Question 8. Disposable ear plugs are essential when working in loud environments. How many times can a disposable ear plug safely be worn? A. Only once. B. Twice. C. Three times if they are cleaned after. D. As long as the sound is inhibited, they can be used indefinitely. Correct answer is, A. Only once. Question 9. Over time, excess noise can damage your hearing. Which of these is an early sign of this? A. Infections of the inner ear. B. There are no early signs. C. A rash may appear around the outside of your ear. D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Correct answer is, D. A ringing sound or even a temporary hearing loss may occur. Question 10. You believe that excess noise at the job site has damaged your hearing. What do you need to do? A. Take a few sick days and rest. B. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. C. Place cotton wads in your ears to prevent any future damage. D. There is nothing that you can do the damage is permanent and cannot be undone. Correct answer is, B. Have your doctor or employer arrange a hearing test for you. Question 11. 
It is a general rule that noise levels may be excessive if you must shout to speak to someone how far away? A. 6 meters. B. 4 meters. C. 5 meters. D. 2 meters. Correct answer is, D. 2 meters. Question 12. When working in a hearing protection zone, you must, A. Use hearing protection when the noises are too loud to stand. B. Be careful not to make excess noise. C. Wear the appropriate hearing protection at all times. D. Have adequate hearing protection in case you need it. Correct answer is, C. Wear the appropriate hearing protection at all times. Question 13. You have just finished working with a particularly noisy piece of equipment and you have a ringing in your ears. What does this symptom imply? A. Your body has been exposed to excess vibration. B. You may be coming down with the flu or a respiratory infection. C. The level of noise was high, but it was still safe. D. You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Correct answer is, D. You've temporarily damaged your hearing. Question 14. Occupational asthma can make it impossible to work with specific materials. How is it caused? A. Constant exposure to rat droppings. B. Breathing in hazardous substances such as dust, vapors and fumes. C. Constant exposure to harmful levels of noise. D. Cutaneous, skin, contact with a hazardous materials. Correct answer is, B. Breathing in hazardous substances such as dust, vapors and fumes. Question 15. You are provided with a dust mask to protect against dangerous fumes but this mask is partially. What should you do? A. Begin your work but take regular breaks. B. Do not start working until you are supplied with the proper protective equipment. C. Wear a second mask above the first. D. Work as quickly as possible. Correct answer is, B. Do not start working until you are supplied with the proper protective equipment. Question 16. You are working with a chemical and require respiratory protective equipment, RPE. If none has been given, what do you do? A. Work as quickly as possible. B. Do not work until the proper equipment and training have been provided. C. Smell the chemical to determine whether it is dangerous. D. Begin work but take breaks at 5 minute intervals. Correct answer is, B. Do not work until the proper equipment and training have been provided. Question 17. Which of these tasks does not cause silica dust to enter into the air? A. Cutting stones and blocks. B. Sawing wood. C. Demolition of concrete floors or screeds. D. Sweeping up rubble. Correct answer is, B. Sawing wood. Question 18. What two methods can you use to reduce the amount of dust from becoming airborne? A. Place a dust collector on the machine. B. Wear a protective mask. C. Wet cutting. D. Keep your area neat. E. Work carefully and slowly. Correct answer is, A. Place a dust collector on the machine. C. Wet cutting. Question 19. When using a power tool for cutting and grinding, why is it important for the dust to be collected? A. Dust can be harmful if it is inhaled. B. It will save time and avoid a mess. C. A machine guard is not necessary if the dust is collected. D. The tool performs better if dust is collected. Correct answer is, A. Dust can be harmful if it is inhaled. Question 20. A nest of pigeons along with droppings are discovered in an area where you will be working. What should you do? A. Cease work and ask a supervisor what you should do. B. Let the birds leave before continuing with your work. C. Attempt to catch the birds. D. Continue with your tasks. Correct answer is, A. Cease work and ask a supervisor what you should do. Question 21. When using water to help control the levels of dust when cutting, what should you do? A. Make certain that you are using as much water as possible. B. 
make sure that the flow of water is adjusted correctly. C. Pour water onto a surface before you begin cutting. D. Ask a co-worker to stand next to you and pour water directly onto your workspace. Correct answer is, B. Make sure that the flow of water is adjusted correctly. Question 22. When you are drilling, grinding, sanding or dusting, how can you protect your lungs from long-term respiratory damage? A. Wear goggles and use a dust extractor or only wet cut. B. Use a regular dust mask, goggles and hearing protection. C. Only use a FFP3 rated mask and goggles. D. Use a FFP3 rated mask, an extraction device or wet cut, impact goggles and hearing protection. Correct answer is, D. Use a FFP3 rated mask, an extraction device or wet cut, impact goggles and hearing protection. Question 23. High levels of dust can be inhaled when performing tasks such as grinding, drilling, sanding and cutting. These levels are most dangerous when, A. Using the tool in a large, indoor area. B. Working in a small room. C. Working outdoor on a calm day. D. Using the tool outside when it is windy. Correct answer is, B. Working in a small room. Question 24. Being exposed to which of these items will not cause lung infections or diseases? A. Bird feces. B. Asbestos fibers. C. Silica and dust form. D. Strong odors. Correct answer is, D. Strong odors. Question 25. You need to sweep up dust that was created during your shift. You should, A. Place a protective mask over your nose and mouth. B. Ensure that there is adequate ventilation. C. Dampen down the area. D. All of the above. Correct answer is, D. All of the above. Question 26. You are required to undertake some work that will produce dust. What will you need to do? A. Only work for a short period of time. B. Avoid the work, as dust can harm your respiratory system. C. Wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, and use devices that will control airborne dust. D. Begin work immediately, dust is hardly dangerous. Correct answer is, C. Wear the correct personal protective equipment, PPE, and use devices that will control airborne dust. Question 27. Solvents in paints and resins can lead to, A. Lung issues. B. Headaches, nausea and dizziness. C. Other effects on the body. D. All of the above. Correct answer is, D. All of the above.